recorded? No, no. <laughs> you made sure of that. Yeah. I, I, I purposely didn't do the one that's even harder for people to follow along and sing. So really quick, I'm just going to be going over, you know, earlier on we talked about um, the, the, the four fields and uh, all what each field represented. Represented, that's a good word. Uh, represented. So we're going to be going over just kind of, hey, what have we already hit and what field is it in? So we're going to talk about that really quick, and then we're going to jump into uh, the, the first um, uh, lesson uh, in going over the pattern of care. So really quick, yesterday we talked about, um, here, let me, uh, church here. We talked about um, the four fields. We started off with an empty field, um, and that is just kind of identifying. It, it's an entry point, right? So, so uh, what Mateo just talked about with house of peace, person of peace, you're identifying people, right? So it's the entry point. Who, who are the people that we're going to go to? Um, I think it was Barbara earlier talked about there's only two types of people in the world. There's lost people and there's saved people, right? So, so those were, were some of the things that we, we talked about and, and uh, discovered that, hey, this is the entry point, the, the empty field. Um, earlier this morning, we went through the three circles in the testimony. Hey, what, do we, what is our gospel pro uh, presentation? Us sowing the seed, right? So, uh, and we would have been out sharing and actually putting that into practice. So that would be a, a piece here of where we would be going and finding those, trying to find those house of peace, those people of peace, and share the, the gospel through the three circles or our testimony or both. Um, with those people. And we, we also talked about just different um, tooling of how to start those conversations um, and all of that. So that's all here in that, in that, that sowing the seed field, right? Um, uh, we also talked about the 411, and that's more in the discipleship aspect. We did that this morning as well with Barbara. So 411 is a discipleship tool to really um, call people to say, hey, this is what we're doing. Will you be a part of it? Will you embrace the, uh, the vision and the goal that, that Christ has set for what we're trying to do. Will you, will you join us in doing that? So that's a discipleship tool. So we, we're going to kind of hit this multiple times as we're going throughout the next few days, but we wanted to kind of bring back to the very beginning of what we're doing and where it lies in each of these pieces. So today we're going to be going over um, uh, some more tools um, that actually apply in both of these areas, but um, specifically for this uh, next piece, we're going to be talking about some stuff that's here in uh, the discipleship um, process. So Lee's going to come up and uh, lead that piece. All right. Woo Thank you. Woo hmm. Great. So uh, what we're going to do, um, each table is going to be a gathering or a church. So right now in this place, you are going to be a church and I'm going to have you, you're going to turn to the person next to you and you're going to share something that's been really encouraging for you this week. And then you're going to share something that's been maybe more difficult for you this week. Um, and so once you've done that, your church is going to come together and you're either going to sing a song um, that most of you know, or I'd recommend going through a psalm and getting to pray through that together. Um, psalm 100 is a really good one to do. So go ahead and do that. I'll give you uh, about 10 minutes to do that. So go ahead and turn to your partner, share something that was encouraging, something discouraging, and then get to pray and sing a song. Go for it. All right. It's so good to get to worship and pray together. And so now I want you to turn to the person next to you and share with them something that has been sticking out to you in your quiet times, either this morning or yesterday. What's something that has really stuck out to you that you've been encouraged by or challenged by? Let's go ahead and do that. So guys, I have to tell you something. Um, earlier this week, I went to Costco and I love shopping at Costco. I just want you to know, I love it. Dylan knows, all my old roommates know. It's super fun. The problem with shopping at Costco is that you need to have a little card. Not only the membership card, but you need your credit card as well. I don't know if you guys realize that. The other day, I went to Costco and gathered everything that I needed and then realized I didn't have my wallet. I had left it at home. And so I had this full cart full of everything I needed, and yet I couldn't do anything. And Costco is like on the opposite side of town from us. So it wasn't like, oh, let me just like run home. It was like, I'm going to have to put everything back. 
because I'm not going to have time because I had something right after that. So it was kind of sad, right? You're like, ah, kind of deflating because you had everything that you wanted, but then you can't bring it home. So I was reading in Numbers the other day. Uh, numbers, this is when the Israelites were traveling around and they had been complaining quite a bit. And there was this one point where they started complaining and um, God sent a bunch of snakes among them to cause some, <laughs> some havoc, some chaos. And they started killing a lot of the Israelites. And so Moses, uh, God tells him to make a bronze snake, right? So he makes a bronze snake and he puts it on a pole and everyone who looks at that snake is not gonna die. This is pretty amazing, pretty amazing. And in John, I'm gonna read a, a passage in John. John 3, it says, Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. So this snake was partially a foreshadowing of Jesus coming and he was going to be raised up on the cross. And if we chose to believe in him, we would have eternal life. The problem is that the Israelites, do you know what they did to that snake? they began to worship the snake. Later on in 2 Kings, it talks about how they had to destroy the snake that Moses made because they began to worship it as an idol. And so the problem is that sometimes God gives us gifts that are good. He gives us things that are very good. Like in that example with the Israelites, he gave us that snake that if you looked at that snake, it was good because you didn't die. But that wasn't salvation. <laughs> And sometimes for us, God gives us gifts. I think particularly, um, I see a lot of people that are lonely. I see a lot of people that look for relationships to heal them. And guys, that doesn't heal them. Relationships do not heal loneliness. But that is a gift that God gives us. And so we can't stop short. We can't stop with that cart full of food. We have to have the checkout card. And that checkout card, we've got to make that next step towards Jesus. We've got to point people from stopping at, oh no, I'm fine, my relationships are good, to there is something so much better. You get to bring the food home. You get to have a hope and a peace that lasts forever. So I want to challenge us. Let's not be like the Israelites who saw that snake and they're like, oh, that's what we need to worship. That's the gift. Let's not be like that and say, oh, I have these relationships. Therefore, I'm not lonely. Let's take it one step further and say, no, God's given us these relationships as gifts. But that's not the solution. The solution is what Jesus has done for us on the cross. And that's what gives us eternal life. So we have a mission to tell that to other people. On this campus, there are people that have stopped and they've got a cart full of gifts but they're not going to make it home. So let's tell that to our people at Fun Spot, at Clemson, in Germany, and at UCF. So I'll have Keegan come up and share a lesson. <laughs> Great. Cool. Thanks, Lee. That was, that was awesome. I want to go to Costco now. <laughs> Anybody else? Is there, is there a Costco near here? Um, so cool. So we're going uh, to be uh, looking at a story in, uh, in Scripture today. So um, if you guys want to turn in your Bibles, we're not going to read it just yet, but go ahead and uh, turn in your Bibles to Luke 19. So... Um, so I'm going to tell you this story, and then uh, we're, going to, we're going to look at it together. So um, Jesus was passing through uh, a town, and there was a, a short man there named Zacchaeus. And he was a tax collector, and he was really, really rich. Uh, and he was trying to see Jesus, and he couldn't see him because the crowds were all standing there. And it's not like they had stadium seating back then. Um, and so he climbed up into a, a tree, a sycamore tree, and uh, he 
wanted to see Jesus. And as Jesus was passing by, he looked up at the tree and he saw Zacchaeus and he said, Zacchaeus, come down from that tree for I'm going to stay at your house today. And Zacchaeus listened and hurriedly, hurriedly, quickly, <laughs> man, English, whew, uh, quickly came down from the tree and, uh, you know, started walking with Jesus back to his house. Well, all of, the, all of the people there started grumbling and complaining because tax collectors were seen as kind of the enemy. They worked for Rome and they stole from the people, right? So they're all like, oh man, look at Jesus. He's, he's hanging out with this sinner who's like the worst of the worst. He's, you know, enemy of his own people sort of thing. And, and on the way, uh, Zacchaeus, hearing all of this, turns and he says to Jesus, he says, you know, if I've defrauded anyone, I will give back to them four times what I have taken, and I will give away half of my possessions to the poor. And Jesus said to them, or says to him, he says, you know, salvation has come to your house today, for uh, you are a son of Abraham, and you have accepted uh, the gift. So, um, turn really quickly and tell each other the, the story uh, of, of Zacchaeus. So just retell it in your own words. So, so, um, looking at that, uh, we're going we're gonna to look at where we see in Scripture in two different areas where it talks about what Zacchaeus exemplified there, which is repenting and believing, right? So, uh, can one person uh, turn to Mark 1.15? Uh, someone turn to that. Don't read it just yet, but raise your hand if you're going to be that person. All right. Brian's going to do that up back. So I'm going to read Acts 2, uh, 38 through 41. Uh, and Peter said to them, Repent and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and your children and for all who are far away, as many as the Lord God will call to himself. With many other words he testified and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this perverse generation. So those who accepted his message were baptized, and that day there, there were 3,000 added to their number. Can you read Mark 1.15? Yeah, so the, the command that Peter and we see Jesus, uh, um, he says it is, uh, repent and believe. And really quickly, uh, the word repent, uh, you know, can be a word that's thrown around in church a, a whole lot. And you can maybe sometimes wonder, what does it really mean? And there, it is a change of course. Um, I think it, it's either originally or at least was a military term that, you know, when they were marching along, they would say, repent, and it was literally a turn move. It was a, a maneuver of turning back the other direction, right? So this idea is repent from what you were trusting in yourself, and then the next step is believe and trust in Christ, right? So that, that's the command, repent and believe. So we're actually going to read now that, that passage that we just um, uh, uh, told back and forth to each other the story. So it's Luke 19, um, and it's 1 through 10. So uh, in, your, in your groups, um, I want you guys to, to read through that, and then we're going we're gonna to look at a few questions uh, regarding it. So um, if you guys, are, as a table, um, you know, read through it. You can either do, have one person read all the way through it. You can read it two verses at a time around the table, however you want to do that. But um, read through it. Make sure that everybody, even if you're not the person reading, that you have the Bible in front of you and you're following along with that. So read through it, and after that, we're gonna, I'll put some uh, questions up here that you guys can start uh, talking about. So, putting up all the questions here, I'm going to say them, and then if you need to look back, they'll be up here. Um, so, looking at this passage, I, I want you guys to, to, as a table, as a church, for you guys to look at it and say, hey, what do we learn about God slash Jesus, right? Then what do we learn about Zacchaeus? What do, and then what do we learn about the other people um, in this story? So, um, hey, what do we learn about God, Jesus, Zacchaeus, and then just anybody else in the story? And whenever you're answering this, um, say what verse you got it from. So this isn't what you think, it is what the Bible says, right? So it says this about this person, not, well, I think Jesus might have maybe, you know, we're, we're gonna, we want to listen and adhere to what the Bible says in this. And then we're going to go over a few different things. So sin to avoid, uh, and then a promise to claim, example to follow, command to obey, and then two final ones I'll put up here as well, which is what stood out to you and who in the story do you, do you kind of um, relate with and why? So, um, and, I, and like I said, I'll put all of these up on the board so you can look back over. And I'll actually try and use this part so it's up high and everybody can read it. So, um, 
Learn about God, Zacchaeus, people, sin to avoid, promise to claim, example to follow, command to obey, and then uh, what stood out to you and who do you relate with in this story. So this will all be up on the board if you need to. But once again, do that as a group. And whenever you're, you're answering all of these questions, make sure you're saying what verse. Hey, I see that God is such because of verse 4, right? So, all right, as your church, go ahead and do that. You got to go through uh, all of those pieces, and uh, so this is just yeah a way to, to be able to look at scripture. Um, so we're actually going to jump over into the next part, and Lee's going to come up and lead that. So uh, I'm gonna hand it back over to Lee. There we go. Oh, yeah. Hey. hey. All right. So what you're going to do is you're going to turn to your buddy. And you're going to retell the story, and this time you're going to include the main point at the end. So you're, because I found that the best way to remember a story is by telling it and using your own words. So now that you've gotten to study it a little bit, you're going to retell it and include the main point at the end. Go for it. All right. We want, we want to explore a little bit further into some of these ideas that we've looked at. So what does it mean to repent? I know Keegan mentioned it a little bit. Tell us who can recap what it means to repent. It means to turn 180 degrees. Nice. Yeah. Realizing that you're in the wrong and going the opposite, like Keegan said, that military word of turning the other way. What does it mean to believe? Again, it's just kind of summarizing. What does it mean to believe? Put your trust in something. Yeah. So moving your trust from what you were trusting and trusting something else. So we're going to do really quick, there's a few verses that we're going to look at because it's going to help us uh, dig into it a little bit further. So I'm going to just point to people and you're going to look up a verse and then I'm going to have you read it. So Josiah, you've got Romans 3.23. Katie, you got Romans 6.23. And then Joy, you got Romans 10, 9, and 10. So this is answering uh, why should we repent and believe. So just say I go for it. Yep. Okay. All have sinned. And then Katie, 623. Awesome. So all have sinned. The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life. And then Romans 10, 9 and 10. Nice. So why do we repent and believe? So that we can be saved. How awesome is that? That is incredible. And then... Um, who has eternal life? Who has got eternal life? <laughs> Who can answer that question? Me. What do you think, Dave? God's children. Okay, God's children. Let's look at, there's a passage, 1 John 5, 11 through 13. Dave, can you read that for us? First John 5, 11 through 13. So we're going to answer the question, who has eternal life, who does not have eternal life, and how confident can we be? Five, eleven through 13. And this is the testimony that God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has the life, whoever does not have the Son of God does not have the life. Nice. So who has eternal life? The Son of God. Yes? Uh, yeah? Nice. Who does not have the sun? Who does not have the <laughs> eternal life? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Can someone just answer the question? <laughs> Good. Perfect. And how confident can we be? 100%. It's written so that we can know. Uh, and then, how can we... Um, can we lose our salvation? Is that possible? 
Let's look in John 10, 27 through 30. Mac, you want to read, read that? John 10, 27 through 30. Awesome. How cool. No one can snatch them out of his hand. So that's pretty amazing confidence that we have. That when we choose to repent and believe, we are saved. And that is eternal. It's awesome. Really cool. All right. So we are now in your churches. We want to, we want to be obedient, like we read earlier. Those who love me will obey my command. So we want to be obedient. So we're going to set some goals. We're going to set some goals that mm -mm -mm. they have an acronym. It helps us remember. The first one is how are we going to connect with Jesus and others? So how are we going to connect with Jesus this week? And how are we going to connect with others? And then how are we going to obey Jesus? Particularly in what we just read. And then how are we going to share the gospel? And then lastly, how are we going to train other disciples? <clears throat> so I want you to turn to your partner and I want you to set goals for this week, how you're going to connect with Jesus and with others. How are you going to obey Jesus through what we just read in the story of Zacchaeus? Uh, how you, who are you going to share the gospel with and train other disciples? So go ahead, break into your groups, set goals. All right, now that we've gotten to set some goals, I really want to pray that God is able to give us his spirit so that we can, uh, we can fulfill those goals because it's spiritual work that we're working on. It's not on our own work. It's God's got to work through us. So let's pray real quick. Lord, thank you so much that we get to go out and we get to be ambassadors and disciples for you. Lord, I thank you that you have given us, uh, you've given us gifts and Lord, you've given us the ultimate gift of your son. Lord, I pray that we would get to have an opportunity this week uh, to get to share with those who have, uh, have received your gifts, who have a cart half full that they're not able to take it home because they don't understand that you are the ultimate gift. And Lord, I pray that we would get to point people to that. Lord, empower us with your spirit. Allow our, our flesh to get out of the way and give us humility so that you can be used, uh, that we can be used by you. We you lift all these things up to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, let's welcome up. JD, he's going to do some explaining. <laughs>